Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. If you are new here, my name is Nishita. Please take a moment to hit the subscribe button. Uh, today's video is going to be a new foundation uh, review from Bite Beauty. It's called their Change Maker Supercharged Micellar uh, Foundation. Uh, one of you commented that I do a review on this, so I picked up uh, two shades from the foundation. Let me tell you guys, like I went to the Sephora and swatched like almost like five to six shades. It took me a hot minute to find like a shade that even comes close to my skin in this foundation line. So one shade that I got is M70, which looks like the closest uh, match to my skin tone right now. But if I get a little bit more tan on, this uh, would be uh, like, you know, a little bit light for me. Uh, and the next shade, I had to go from M70 to T105. Uh, all the shades in between these two, like from uh, 70 to 105, are either too cool tone, too orange, or uh, too olivey. So the undertones are not the best. I feel like the shade range uh, could need a little bit of work. Uh, but I'm, I'm letting you guys know that if you're closer to my skin tone, at least you know how to look for your shade uh, in this particular foundation. Uh, so for today, I'm going to mainly use uh, M70. If I feel like it's turning a little bit ashy around my mouth and chin, uh, I will add T105. So I'm going to pull up the Sephora website and see what this foundation claims to do. By the way, Bite Beauty is a clean brand, so all their products are formulated without sulfates, phthalates and uh, synthetic uh, fragrances. Uh, this foundation is supposed to be a clean, long-wearing foundation with gentle micellar technology that mimics skin texture for a natural flawless finish. So you're gonna get a medium coverage with this. The finish is natural and it's suitable for normal dry combination and oily skin types. Um, what else? Oh, by the way, uh, even though it said doesn't have any synthetic fragrance, but in the ingredients list, I did see that it has fragrance in it. So this foundation might not have any synthetic fragrance, uh, but it's not completely fragrance free. So let's start with the application. On one side I'm going to use my beauty blender and on the other side I'll use a brush and see which way it works the best. So this is what? M70. And the next shade that I have is T105. You know, because of these lights, the shades might look a little bit washed out on camera, but in real life, this felt like a lot more orange when I was watching uh, the foundation yesterday. And Sephora lights don't help either. So, <laughs> so I'm going to first start off with, uh, you know, mostly uh, M17 my cheek area. And wherever I'm a little bit uh, more tanned, that is my chin and forehead for me, I'm going to uh, add the shade T105. Since this is a medium coverage foundation, it might give me a grey overcast if I'm not doing the shade correctly. So I'm going to start off with M70. So let me wipe this off. Yeah, this has a uh, scent to it, but it's nothing that stands out immediately. It is very mild. So now I'm going to use a beauty blender to blend this all out. Okay, that is making me look a little bit washed out. Uh, let's see if it oxidizes. Hopefully it will oxidize. I think the best bet for me would be to mix these two shades to get my actual shade. But in my cheek and forehead, I'm going to completely use T105. Otherwise, uh, it will look very grey. Personally, I prefer Beauty Blender with this foundation because I felt like with brush, it was just moving the product around and not giving me any coverage. The consistency of this foundation is very creamy. It's kind of like a moisturizer, if you will. You see that? 
So if you're closer to my skin tone, uh, I would say try the shade T105. M70 might be too light since it's going to be spring soon. Uh, because this foundation, even though uh, when you swatch it, it might look a little bit dark. Once you blend it out, it kind of meshes in your skin. Uh, so I feel like a 105 might be a better match when compared to M70. Yeah, I definitely prefer Beauty Blender with this foundation. It blends out like a dream. Whereas with a brush, not so much. And this is the swatch I've had on my skin for some time now. And this is a brand new swatch. As you can see, uh, there is no oxidization with this foundation at all. So based on first impressions, I really love how it blended out uh, with the Beauty Blender. Uh, it feels very lightweight on the skin. Coverage wise, uh, I feel like this feels and the way it applied and the coverage it got me feels more like a BB cream. But you know, a little bit more coverage than a BB cream would have to offer. Uh, the maximum coverage you will get is medium. I did layer it quite well, but it's still not, uh, you know, covering any of my spots completely. I don't mind that. I can always go over with a concealer. Uh, but you know this is definitely a light to medium coverage foundation. I really like the finish of this. It gives you like a natural uh, kind of satin finish I want to say. It's not completely matte. It's not overly dewy either. Uh, I really like the finish of this foundation. So far it looks really natural. One thing that I want to say right away is that the shade range is not the best. I think they only have 31 shades which you know a one year back or two years back, 31 shades might be completely okay but at this point all the brands are coming out with 40 shades in the first launch. So I think they should have done better uh, with their uh, shade range. Uh, but I really love the packaging. It's very lightweight. You can totally throw in your purse. And yesterday when I was applying it to my face at Sephora, I just used my fingers to blend it all over. And I felt like you don't need a brush or a beauty blender to actually blend this foundation because you know, the consistency of this is like a moisturizer. So you can just use your fingers and apply it all over and layer it wherever you want extra coverage. So that's one thing that I really like about it. Very easy application. So I really love the packaging. Like it's very simple. Uh, even if you drop it, it's not gonna break. It's very easy to travel with as well. So now I'm gonna go off camera, apply the rest of my makeup. And as I do that, I get to, you know, observe how uh, the rest of my makeup is layering on top of this foundation. So once I'm done, uh, I'll see you guys again. So I finished my makeup. It's currently 12.45. So I've had this foundation on for about, uh, I think I started the wet test around 10.45 or so. So it's been already two hours since I've had this foundation on. And the rest of my makeup blended out beautifully on top. I had no issues. The foundation is actually doing really well so far, except in this area. And that's not on the foundation, let me be honest with you guys. So you guys saw that the huge acne spot that I have. So I kept digging at it and I kind of went overboard with the acne treatment which caused my skin to dry out uh, in this area. So that's a self note, I should never do that. Uh, it's just too bad for my skin. But because of that, my skin is a little bit more on the dry side right now. And I did not use any powder to set my makeup in place because you know my skin is already dry and if I apply powder on top, it's gonna look even drier. Uh, I just didn't want that to happen and I'm not even, you know, applying any powder underneath my eyes because, you know, this area is already very dry. So if I apply powder on top, it's just going to look very crusty. Uh, but the rest of my makeup, I'm wearing the Ofra Cosmetics uh, Long Lasting Liquid Lipstick in the shade Verona. And for eyes, I used my favorite browns, uh, the Colourpop Brown Sugar Palette. This one in the crease. Uh, this is all over the lid, just slightly dusted just to add that smoky effect. And closer to my lash line, I used this uh, deep grey color just to, you know, give some definition to the lash line. So that's all I'm wearing today. Uh, and of course, bronzer and blush. So everything blended out beautifully on top. So far, I really like the foundation. It looks like a very good, promising, natural day-to-day -day kind of foundation. Uh, but those are my thoughts uh, at this two hour point. So I'm going to have to wear it for the rest of my day and see how it wears. Uh, so yeah, I'll see you all in the evening. Here is I'm back. Uh, it's currently 6.20. So I've had this foundation on for almost seven and a half hours at this point. And I think this foundation is good. Uh, it has held up really well on my skin. Uh, it still feels very lightweight on the skin. I don't feel like I have anything on. It is grabbing onto all like, you know, the rest of my makeup, my bronzer and blush really well. The foundation actually held up really well. Given the fact that we have been running errands because, you know, our move is next weekend. We have to vacate this place. So we started packing this weekend because we wanted to get a head start. So that's why you see all these racks empty. I, I'm almost done, uh, you know, packing my beauty though. Uh, and the foundation has held up really well. 
uh, it might have you know come off a little bit uh, here from my chin uh, because you know i was eating and constantly kept touching my face but uh, rest all is it held up really well the foundation is doing the best it could do given my skin situation you know at times like these even if i had pulled out my most favorite foundation it would still behave like this so i don't want to completely blame the foundation for my skin situation but the longevity the way it worked throughout the day and the fact that it feels very lightweight on my skin uh, it is definitely a good foundation and coming to the cons uh, i like i already mentioned the shade range is not the best um so they could totally improve that and being said that this is a good foundation but at this point i don't think it's anything revolutionary so if you already own a foundation that you love and use uh, i don't think you need to run out and buy this one i'll take that later so yeah like i said you don't need to run out and buy this foundation if you already have foundations that you love and If you are someone who likes to go for more glamorous foundations, this is definitely not going to be it because you know the best coverage you will get with this is medium. Of course, you can use concealer to do spot concealing and add extra coverage to your face. But if you are looking for a good glamorous foundation, this is not going to be it. If you have discoloration, acne spots that you are hoping a foundation would cover, uh, this might not do it for you. But I want to give this foundation like two more tries. you know when i'm having a really good skin day and see if it performs any better than it did today i mean today also it's good it's just that you know my dry patches are distracting me from that fact so i will leave a note on the screen to update you guys how this foundation performed and i'm not having a very bad skin day guys yes, so i wore this foundation a couple of times after that and i really liked the end results like uh it's very hydrating it's long wearing it's a perfect a day to day kind of foundation uh and you know if you're looking for a good everyday foundation i'd say definitely give this one a try but one more thing i want to mention is that this foundation broke me out uh so i think it's probably the fragrance in it i'm not sure uh so that's the reason i will not be using this one again but also keep in mind i have very sensitive skin and i have to be really careful about what products i'm using on my face Uh, if you don't have that problem, uh, this foundation is definitely worth a try, especially if you're looking for a good hydrating day-to-day -day foundation. So that completes this review. Those are my thoughts on the new Bite Beauty foundation. If you liked it and found it helpful, please give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I will see you all in my next one. Bye.